a well written statement of purpose or sop can open up the doors to the best graduate schools offering masters phd and mba degrees they can even help you tide over some weak areas in your profile and achieve more than just a top university admit like the envious situation of getting a full scholarship despite a low gre or gmat score many international students who are non native english speakers think an sop is a way to demonstrate their grasp over english it's not your toefl and ielts performance is a better indicator of your comfort with the english language the nuances of how you write a good sop can differ based on the degree the geography and the overall objective which may not necessarily be academic in nature as some companies ask for an sop for a job too however there are some fundamental tips and ideas that apply to all variants of the sop rather than keeping it completely open ended we'll assume you're writing an sop for ms programs as that's the degree that's made the term sop buzzworthy among international students but the approach and principles we'll suggest should help you with any degree you're applying to first let's understand why is writing an sop important and difficult the big problem with using the objectively designed application form to evaluate ms applicant profiles is that there's hardly anything outside the academic world to really judge it's great to have a single page summary of a person but not very practical when you're trying to understand someone's aptitude and future prospects as admission consultants we face the same issue that admission committee officers do every time someone posts their qualifications entrance exam scores and the number of years of work experience in our free profile evaluation form and asks us to look into our crystal ball and reveal their future we can't however what does help is when applicants share some more information about their aspirations likes dislikes fears and more the dead application with an emotionless listing of some numbers and facts now starts transforming into a real person readers can now imagine what might happen when this person is put in a demanding academic world that's why an sop is important it can tell a compelling story that a plain application with basic facts and statistics like exam scores and grades just can't in an mba admissions process there's an interview too that provides another opportunity to applicants to demonstrate their capabilities and potential that is missing in ms programs the decision to accept or reject your master's application will be taken without speaking with you and based purely on the few elements that constitute the ms application that makes the sop even more important in the ms admissions process what makes it difficult to write an sop is that there's no formula to crack it often the sop requirements are open ended and vague you may be given a word count such as 300 500 or 1000 words or maybe they let you decide assuming you decide on the word count let's say that's 500 words what next there's so much you've done during the last 20 plus years of existence on this planet what should you write about that isn't already been covered in your transcripts and letters of recommendation confusing let's talk about how to write a good sop writing 500 words can take well around 30 minutes but writing a statement of purpose can take several days why so what's the big deal in creating an sop there are several steps that you need to do before you can create an sop that can get you the attention and reaction you deserve from the admissions officer introspection sounds like something retired people do when they have a lot of time on their hands but by then it's too late so we start doing a little bit of that right now when it matters more we are not talking about sitting in the garden and entertaining general philosophical thoughts rather it's about recapitulating in your head or on paper all the important events that have happened in your life and that have influenced your thoughts and actions and made you who you are today and what you want to be tomorrow when you're not being inducted into a hypnotic trance by a trained hypnotherapist it can be quite difficult to keep your mind focused and think about all these long forgotten things maybe it was just a bad performance in kindergarten where the teacher insulted you in class that's a true story by the way that made you serious about doing well in academics or it could have been a more recent incident about facing a difficult programming problem that triggered your interest in finding a more structured way to tackle bigger problems of a similar nature these are only examples what you come up with during the introspection may not be directly linked to your course of study but they might matter or maybe they won't but you'd never know till you create a super list of such stories first and then eliminate the ones that you think are trivial and not relevant to share with the guys in the universities after having spent enough time to look inwards it's time to look outwards now to put it all within context sorry if this is sounding like a spiritual guru's meditation camp hang in there we'll get back to the materialistic world soon when you're applying for a university degree you're looking forward to an academic upgrade in a very specific niche 
and there's a bigger purpose to it as well beyond getting the degree getting a job you need to be clear about both what are you expecting from the degree and why are you placing your bets on this university consider these two snippets that an applicant might be thinking of while working on a sop for an ms in computer science in a top american university check out this first sop example here's what's wrong with it though it may seem as if you've poured your heart out it's vague and not very credible you're blaming destiny for things not going right and you want harvard to come in and fix things even if your gre exam scores are decent enough an sop written like this will not impress anyone that's why you will need to research more about the college the curriculum the professors the university culture and where students who have completed the master's course are heading here's a better sop sample it's not perfect but at least we are not talking in thin air it's becoming a little more specific and a little more real there's a logical connection between the events that happened and influenced your interests that's probably encouraged you to explore a master's degree at this stage it shows that you've done your research about the university strengths and read up on specific professors who teach on the program let's talk about writing the sop now that you have enough clarity about what you want from the program and how you aim to get it it's time to dip your feather in the ink pot start writing in a new ms word document and for the first draft since there'll be many don't worry about the word count or grammatical mistakes or typos try to get all those brilliant but possibly confusing thoughts out of your head and into the file don't worry if it looks like one big ugly mess and just because you've taken care of the typos don't assume it's perfect either this is our raw material we need to give it shape and form that's what reviewing and editing your sop is all about for the initial drafts don't involve anyone else they'll probably get frustrated after reading it once or twice external reviewers can wait till you're pretty sure that you've done all you can in your power go back and read it aloud rather than just browsing silently you'll get a better idea of how it comes across when someone else would be reading it reviewing the sop in the next few review and editing rounds work towards polishing the sop and getting it in the final shape which means you'll need to start chopping off the fat that's the extra words and work on the flow impact relevance and presentation after a few cycles your brain will start going numb your eyes may start playing tricks on you with sop words circling around your head the point is there'll be blind spots that you cannot see this is a good time to bring in those external reviewers make sure you share not only the sop but also the other admissions related data like your recommendations and resume so that the reviewer can consider the cross play with the various elements whether you choose to work with professional sop reviewers or manage it informally with friends and relatives that's your call but do ensure that the reviewer is objective and unbiased has an idea of how the admissions process works and how admission officers evaluate profiles so that's a quick tour of what you need to do in order to write a strong sop that will impress the admissions team and get you into the best university that your profile deserves if you get stuck while writing your statement of purpose you can always reach out to us we've seen a fair share of sops to know what works and what doesn't you'll find more about our sop review service in the description below good luck